The suit against the academic staff union of universities has been adjourned till Friday, September 16. Hi, welcome to what's happening this are the top 10 stories. At number one, the suit against the academic staff union of universities filed by the Minister of Labour and Employment, Chris Ngige, has been adjourned till Friday, September 16. The matter came up before Justice Polycarp Haman of the National Industrial Court of Nigeria in Abuja. Also, when the matter slated for mention came up, human rights activist Ebunolu Adegorua informed the court that he was representing the Socio-Economic Rights and Accountability Project and that he had filed a suit on the same subject matter before the same court. He then proceeded to apply that the Eastern suit be consolidated and Serap be joined in the suit as the defendant instead of multiple suits on the same matter before the same court. At number two, aviation workers staged a protest nationwide on Monday over a clause added to the aviation bill. The protest left travelers stranded and flights delayed. Recalling, the unions in the aviation sector had directed members to embark on peaceful demonstrations at all airports in Nigeria to demand the expunging of obnoxious essential services clauses from the bills of the aviation agencies. The nationwide protest is convened under the banners of the National Union of Air Transport Employees, Air Transport Services Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Association of Nigerian Association Professionals, Amalgamated Unions of Public Corporations, Civil Service Technical and Recreational Services Employees, and the National Association of Aircraft Pilots and Engineers. They also gave the government a 14-day ultimatum. At number three, a story building around Akimumi Street Monday in the Maryland area of Lagos State sunk after a torrential rainfall. Nine persons were rescued from the building. The Lagos Territorial Coordinator National Emergency Management Agency, Ibrahim Farinloye, confirmed the development in a statement. He said the agency's officials were deployed to rescue the victims after receiving a distress call about the emergency. The landlord reportedly escaped with a ladder, leaving the occupants in danger. The occupants further lamented that they have nowhere to go as they just renewed their rent. At number four, Ifeanyi Uba, a senator representing Anambra South District, on Monday confirmed the attack on his convoy and also noted that a DSS personnel was among some of his personnel and security aides that were killed. The incident happened on Sunday. Also, the police spokesperson in Anambra, Tochuku Ikenga, confirmed the incident but did not give the figure of the victims. Senator Uba, who confirmed the incident to reporters on Monday in Oka, identified some of those killed in the attack as Obum Ikechuku and Goodness Matthias. However, he did not give details of the identity. At number five, the Economic Community of West African State Court of Justice has ordered the Nigerian government to pay a sum of 10 million naira to the family of Salomi Acheju Abu, who was born alive in her Ochadamu home in Kogi State during the last governorship election in the state. Recalling Abu until her gruesome mother by a group of political thugs who was the women leader of the People's Democratic Party in the state. In the judgment delivered via Zoom, a three-man panel of justices of the court held that security operatives especially failed to act and save the deceased when she was being attacked despite their presence. At number six, official documents from the monthly issuance report by the Debt Management Office and the Central Bank of Nigeria revealed that Nigeria's debts have risen by 4 trillion naira in the past five months to 45.25 trillion naira. According to the document, the federal government accounted for more than 88% of the debt stock. The document also revealed that the federal government raised about 3.34 trillion naira through its regular issuance of domestic debt instruments between April and August. At number 7, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control has confirmed 241 cases of monkeypox. In its recent situation report, NCDC confirmed cases were reported from 30 states in the country. There are no fewer than 604 suspected cases of the infection. Also, the NCDC said the number of confirmed cases of Lassa fever in the country has increased to 909 in week 35 of 2022. It also showed that there were 6,547 suspected cases of the disease. At number 8, the National Bureau of Statistics has revealed that Russia in the second quarter of 2022 sold to Nigerian markets 21.8 billion naira worth of goods despite its ongoing war with Ukraine. MBS disclosed this in its foreign trade report. The report showed that the second quarter sales by Russia to the Nigerian market 
was a massive increase of 143% when compared with 8.98 billion naira in first quarter of 2022. This increase is against the prediction that Nigeria's import from Russia might be at risk with the ongoing conflict. At number 9, the federal government on Monday said improvements in the remuneration and conditions of service of judicial workers would remain uppermost on the agenda of the President Buhari-led regime. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice Abuba Kamalami stated this in a statement while making an address to the 2022 Court of Appeal annual legal year. The Minister said the ongoing process of improving the welfare package of the judicial workers would be completed in accordance with extant constitutional and stationary provisions. He said the government also made special budgetary provisions to cater for special assignments associated with national elections. Finally, at number 10, Kenya's Asset Recovery Agency has rejoined its money laundering claims against Flutterwave and three other Nigerian tech companies operating in the country. Avalon Offshore Logistics Limited, OIT Africa Limited and Remit Capital Limited were the companies listed alongside Flutterwave. They had been accused of using their platform as a conduit for money laundering. Recall that in April, the agency obtained orders to freeze millions belonging to the three companies prohibiting them from transacting, withdrawing, transferring, and dealing in any manner in any profits or benefits derived or accrued from the said funds. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.